Hey everybody, Cinephile Mike is here with day 35 of Oscar Rewind, the 2024 edition, my bi-weekly series of videos where I am revisiting the films that reflect the earlier work of this past year's Oscar nominees and the winners. As always, I'll be discussing the awards history for the film, the box office information, the critical response, and as always, these reviews are spoiler-free. So, today, we are going indie. Yes, the last couple of episodes, we talked about the bigger studio films with Seven and with Jaws. Thank you for all the views on Jaws. That's been one of the more um, increased viewed videos in a while. So I thank you. Let's keep spreading these words. Uh, but today in the indie route, I am discussing Paramount Vantage's dramedy, Year of the Dog. Written and directed by Mike White. Many of you who may know him for his crazy Emmy run lately. And I'll get to that later. Uh, who also produced this little film that was released in the spring of 2007. Also fitting that I'm dropping this review today, Mike White was one of the two writers on this weekend's box office hit, Despicable Me 4. But if you want to know my thoughts on that one, ooh, head on over to cinephilemike.com, check out my review. Uh, but we're not here to talk about that. We're here to talk about Year of the Dog. Now, according to Box Office Mojo, the film had a modest small box office return, making only $1,540,141 domestically after being in the theaters for over two and a half months and $66,096 internationally, so it only had a worldwide total box office take of $1,606,237 worldwide. On Rotten Tomatoes, the ratings are a bit divided, with 145 critical reviews making up a total giving it a 70% critical rating, but only a 43% on the audience side, which is based on a tally an average of 20, over 25,000 audience reviews. So, why is Year of the Dog here? Why am I talking about it today? Well, it's because of one of the men behind the film. And no, I'm not talking about Mike White. Although, let me reference, in case you're not sure who Mike White is, he has been making a killing recently for The White Lotus. Mike White created, wrote, and directed the entire series, and that's been doing very well at the Emmys and in TV land. Uh, but for one of the other film's producers, Ben LeClaire, before being nominated for his first Oscar this past year, he was one of the producers of the Oscar-winning Delight American Fiction, Year of the Dog marked his first sole pr um, first main producer credit, um, before that, he only had one associate producer credit on another Mike White project, Nacho Libre. Additionally, this past year, he was also one of the producers on the film Fair Play, which landed its actress, Phoebe Dynavor, Dyn Dynavor, apologies for butchering that name, uh, was one of the nominees for the E.E. E. Rising Star Award at the BAFTAs. And I did review both Fair Play and American Fiction last year during the 96 Days. Um, Year of the Dog had a very small award season journey. Uh, the only recipient was only really nominated for one award, which was for the writer-director, Mike White. He was a nominee for Best Screenplay at the Independent Spirit Awards. Also, not awards I usually reference, but I think worth mentioning, especially for this film, and we will get into it. Uh, Paramount Vantage, the film's distributor, was the recipient of Outstanding Feature Film at the Genesis Awards. Again, I haven't spoken about these. I wasn't even sure what the Genesis Awards were, so I had to do my own research. Uh, so if you are unfamiliar with them, like I was, these are awards given to the entertainment industry by the Humane Society of the United States for raising public awareness of animal issues, which is a prominent theme in this film. So, what is this about? Year of the Dog is the story of Peggy Spade. A nice pivot for Molly Shannon uh, away from the broad comedy. Peggy is a middle-aged administrative assistant in some type of firm, we're not exactly sure where it is, somewhere in California, with no real-life prospects, a single woman, her life consists of focusing on her best companion, her little dog, Pencil, her job, the occasional lunch with her office bestie, Layla, played by the always enjoyable Regina King, and visiting with her very self-involved brother, Pierre, played by Thomas McCarthy, and sister-in-law, Brett, played with that holier-than-thou Big Little Lies energy by Laura Dern. Not digging that energy, it works very well here for the world of this film. So one night, Pencil is refusing to come inside, so Peggy lets him, you know, be outside. But then the next morning, 
she hears him whimpering in her neighbor's yard. Her neighbor, Al, played by John C. Riley, helps her look. And ultimately, they find Pencil lying on his side outside Al's shed, whimpering and in pain. So Peggy quickly rushes him to the vet, and sadly, Pencil does not make it. He dies of what is they identify merely as toxic poisoning. So this makes Peggy feel lost. Now Al asks Peggy out and, you know, tries to, you know, maybe there's a little bit of life here. She hasn't really had relationships to speak of. Her friend Layla was saying, you need to get out there more. So she goes out with Al. Maybe this is a hope. But then through some interesting stories at dinner and then walking around and seeing some things at Al's home, Peggy seems to believe that his careless energy, his carelessness may have indirectly led to Pencil's death. So this is going to be a problem for Al. And then through this grief, we see another potential attempt at happiness, which comes in the form of Newt, an ASPCA employee who was present at the vet's office when Pencil was brought in, which is played with a wonderful, genuine sincerity by Peter Sarsgaard. And he has a rescue dog named Valentine that he thinks will be just what Peggy needs. And so she accepts this and also begins to explore potential relationship with Newt. Maybe this can be her new happy life path. And through Newt, she's introduced to a whole new lifestyle of veganism and the importance of animal rights, learning about all the different animal issues. Now, through all of these doors that are opening, maybe Peggy goes a little bit to the extremes of these as she falls down the rabbit hole. Apologies for the bad animal pun, um, which will cause her challenges at work with her, bo her boss, Robin, played by Josh Pays, and with her family. And also Newt, a little more than to be meeting the eye there. So this may not be Peggy's happily ever after as she tries to take this new stab at life as things start to crumble around her. So here's the thing, <laughs> without spoiling this plot. Mike White is great at the absurd, and in his films, he takes these small characters in their, you know, average, everyday lives, sometimes mundane circumstances, and makes them very watchable and engaging. And even when the some extreme situations pop up, we are still with these characters. Now, I hadn't seen this film when it originally came out. I watched it as purpose for this Rewind season, and I'm a fan of his. Personally, I feel some of the stronger films. I'm a huge fan of 2002's The Good Girl with Jennifer Aniston and Jake Gyllenhaal. Uh, the very subversive uh, Beatrice at Dinner. It was 2017 with Salma Hayek. Um, look, he gets these incredibly talented performers together. Molly Shannon, John C. Riley, Laura Dern, Regina King. He knows how to use them, and they really live in these characters. And while there is a little bit of larger than life to some of the circumstances... They, they don't fall into the trap of becoming farcical. They're just eccentric enough to carry this story along and not, you know, we're laughing with them, not at them, which is quite nice. Obviously, Shannon is in the lead role, so she has to carry this film, and she is a standout. She plays this wonderfully, fully fleshed out character that sometimes we don't see. I mean, look, she's a woman who's coming to terms with grief. And, you know, when people go through grief, they make different decisions. Sometimes they're for the good. Sometimes they are not as great. And, you know, that's why we were able to sympathize with characters like Peggy. You know, and White excels at his writing. However, with this film, he kind of builds up to this climax and the aftermath of it and gets rushed very quickly. The, the aftermath, like... It's almost like Mike White was afraid to explore some of the mental strain that comes with the grieving process and life decisions. I mean, we see Peggy make some very, very irrational decisions. And when this all kind of comes crumbling down, we don't really see the aftermath. And I feel that that's a little bit of a disservice because we've spent about an hour and 10 minutes following these characters. And then we don't really get to see a fully fleshed out ending. Um... So that's a little bit unfortunate. But again, I want to credit Leclerc. He has, you know, with films like this and American Fiction, which has a little bit similar tone, some of what is in fair play, you know, with these subversive characters and these circumstances and how they get strained. They're watchable films. 
and you know what this film raises is also about you know all the different issues surrounding animal cruelty animal testing euthanasia amongst animals and pets um the genesis award is recognized the film does have a message i just feel we we are a little bit heavy on one and not so much on the other so for me year of the dog while shannon molly shannon gets a five star for her performance she is thoroughly enjoyable the film itself as a whole for me is a three-star film. Uh, but if you are a fan of White or Shannon, you should definitely check this one out or any of the other performers that I me mentioned. Uh, however, if you would like to watch Year of the Dog, you have to pay for a digital rental. As of this recording and posting, there's no streaming information. Um, and beware if you decide to double check me and fact check me and please feel free to do so. You may find a different film on Tubi and Pluto, The Year of the Dog, but that is a very different movie that came out last year, 2023. Different movie, different cast, haven't seen it, don't know about it. That's the film that's streaming. I did the, I did the digital purchase for $10 because again, I'm a huge Mike White fan. Not, although not sure if I'll necessarily go back to this one again, but you never know. Um, but there you have it. Check out Year of the Dog if you're a fan of White and Shannon. There is some good stuff in here. All right. I hope everyone has been enjoying watching Rewind. As always, please click the button and subscribe to the channel and spread the word. You can follow me on all social media platforms and on Letterboxd. You can check out my website, cinephilemike.com, for additional exclusive print reviews of all of this summer's new releases. Happy watching, everyone. And until next time, this is Cinephile Mike saying take a break and watch something new.